so this isn't great. The, yeah, the non-profit killer. They're running it back. 219 to 184 with 15 Democrats voting yes. Thank you, Democrats. The what? Yeah, they tried to do this before and it failed, but it looks like they're running it back. It basically means that in the name of being anti-terror, it would give the uh, the Treasury Secretary the ability to revoke the tax-exempt status of any nonprofit they want with no explanation or no oversight. So it would give the Treasury Secretary an appointed position by the president, you know who our upcoming president is, the ability to revoke the nonprofit status of any well, nonprofit they want with, with no oversight or no like procedural mechanisms. They would just like that. That's crazy strong. Yeah, you might call it like a wildly authoritarian and, and you know, unconstitutional if you could imagine such a thing. That includes churches. Nope. Churches aren't a nonprofit. That's a different tax consideration. Yeah, anyway, the real reason this is being done is uh, is for Israel. The bill's backers have made it clear the bill is targeted at groups advocating for Palestinian rights, giving presidents the power to even further target Muslim and Arab advocacy groups, which have already long faced repression. Lawmakers voting against it raised alarm that presidential administrations could also use it to crush any other nonprofits it deems fit, especially under Trump. Yeah, keep in mind, like, all it will take is for uh, Trump's administration to declare that any kind of Democrat advocacy is pro-terrorism and uh, they could just revoke the nonprofit status. It effectively makes nonprofits like an impossible thing to develop with, a, with, with any kind of like political agenda, effectively. Who allowed this? 219 members of the House of Representatives. Fun fact, the Senate sponsor is the same Democrat who introduced a bill to give you 20 years in prison if your business boycotts Israel in conjunction with the UN. Yes, I remember this. Israel first, yes. Again, please keep in mind, because I, I, I did a whole video on this, and it's going to keep coming up over and over and over again, okay? It's just the MIC. That's it. It's just the MIC. Like, the, the, the fact that this is being done in the name of Israel is only because that is the convenient. They did this exact same shit back in, uh, 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 with the Iraq war. All of it, the exact same thing. The Patriot Act being the obvious example, but a crackdown on organizations that opposed the United States in their, uh, uh, in their invasion, on like a social level, their apparatuses within the media, everything. And they did the same thing with the Vietnam War. Would something like the Trevor Project fall under the purview of this legislation? If they wanted it to, sure. It's a nonprofit, right? So yeah, I mean, again, they don't have to even provide a justification. Constitutional lawyer Jamie Raskin called this bill a werewolf in sheep, uh, sheep's clothing and explained that the bill would give the Treasury Secretary the ability to label a group as terrorist supporting without any standard of proof. Then he explained, once this scarlet letter and the infamy of being designated a terrorist supporting group are firmly affixed on the organization, the stigmatized can finally go to a judge. But incredibly, the legal burden is explicitly put on them to prove they are not a terrorist supporting group, completely reversing the burden of due process, which properly belongs to the government. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Lamau, no standard of proof, love that. Yeah, it, it explicitly describes no standard of proof. Is that even constitutional? I mean, I would say no, but you can take it up with our 6-3 conservative. It's not even a conservative bit, man. Democrats overwhelmingly voted against this, but some Democrats, I can probably even tell you some of, right, some of uh, which ones. What's the name of the guy who went after uh, Hassan on Twitch again? Uh, what's it? Richie Torres? Is that uh, the one I'm thinking of? Yeah, Richie Torres. Bet you anything he voted in favor of this. Don't even know who voted in favor of this? Bet you he did. Yes, yes, he flipped. Yeah, okay, there you go. Get enough APAC money, Democrats will turn in favor of this too. Torres did not vote in favor? He didn't vote for it this round? No kidding! Okay! So did he vote for it the first time? That's surprising. I mean, I guess it's a pretty egregious bill, but that guy is like really in on it. Oh, well, I can tell you of at least one Democratic senator who's going to vote for this. Yes, he did. Not voting. So he just abstained then, which is interesting. I guess they paid him enough to abstain, but not, uh, not enough to vote yes. Here are the yeses. Colin Alred, no surprises there. Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Yeah, I don't have a eidetic memory of every Democratic politician. Thankfully, I don't want that information clogging up my brain, so I can't, I can't look at every name here and be like, ah, yes, of course. If I was Sam Cedar, you could get that. I would be like, ah, yeah, calling upon my 
decades of political an analysis uh, and experience, you know, I, I could say, yeah, like all these people, easy read. These people are all ghouls. Well, yeah, I could tell you uh, that I can tell you for sure. The bill had come to a vote last week after Republicans tried to bypass House processes and pass the bill with a two thirds majority vote. It failed 256 to 145 with 52 Democrats voting for it. In a renewed bid this week, Republicans rushed the bill through committee, allowing it to pass with a simple majority. Reportedly, many Democrats voted against the bill last week because of their fears over how it would empower Trump specifically, not necessarily due to the chilling effect it could have on nonprofit newsrooms, civil rights groups, and especially Muslim and Arab advocacy groups. That's nice. It's nice to know that like Democrats aren't principally against authoritarianism in a lot of cases. They just kind of think Trump would be bad with it, you know. But if Biden and 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 his Treasury Secretary or whatever Treasury Secretary the Kamala Harris administration would have gone with, it, you know, if 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 they wanted to, you know, crack down on it, when's the Senate vote on this? How long do how long do we have before uh before we we have this be law, I guess. Well, not be law, it still has to be signed by the president, but you know. This law seems eerily similar to the anti-NGO laws that pro-Russian governments have passed labeling nonprofits as foreign agents. You are correct. This is, this is literally just a standard, like, uh, boilerplate authoritarian measure. It, it Like, literally. It's just, like, cur stamp, you know? Obviously, for countries like Georgia or Russia, the concern isn't actually foreign agents. The concern is that NGOs are often advocates for political change and their authoritarian regimes. Over here in the United States, we can't really fearmonger about foreign agents quite as much because we're the most powerful country in the world. So instead, we have to frame it as like terrorists, you know, not even necessarily like a foreign government, but just like in the vaguest sense, like Hamas, basically. Everything's going to get worse. Enemy from within, Europe. And keep in mind, not only is it enemy from within, like fascist bullshit, the Democrats are also on board with this. In the initial vote, 50 Dems voted in favor of it. Now they're concerned because they know Donald Trump is going to be the president, but all that all that does, it all that suggests to me is that they're okay with authoritarianism if it's done under a like competent bureaucratic administration. Authoritarianism but run by adults. Antifa will be targeted too. Antifa is not a nonprofit. I'm uh, happy to say it's not. It's not just being done here, you know. Fox News and you know uh, uh, a variety of right wing outlets uh, have been attacking Twitch for having Hassan Piker on them. They're going to come after all of us. It is part of the process under the guise of defending Israel because that is the chosen like mantra and banner and flag flown of the establishment. They will do everything they can to make it illegal to disagree with them. You know, this is not the first time they've done this. Do you have any backup options in case you get deplatformed from a uh, YouTube? I'll, I'll describe a rock in Seattle and you guys can leave envelopes with cash in it underneath the rock. And I'll go and do a pickup every day.